All right, good evening, everyone. We're gonna give it just a couple seconds to allow our students to go ahead and join. Before we get started, I'm gonna go through a very quick welcome here. So first off, I do just wanna thank you for joining us and welcome you to the Virtual College Exploration for All Illinois Students, sponsored by the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling and StriveScan. A few housekeeping announcements just before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type any questions that you might have for our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so just know the panelists can't see or hear you. Um, and then just this is just one of the many sessions that is happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at IACAC.org. And this presentation is being recorded, so it will be available within about a week at the same website, IACAC.org. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters to get us started for today. All right, well, hi everyone. So um, good evening, afternoon, wherever you're joining for, uh, uh, from. Uh, my name is Amy, I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Alaska Pacific University. So we're really excited that you're um, checking out APU. And I wanna share a little bit more um, about our university, Alaska in general. Um, so by all means, if you have questions um, as we go along, don't uh, hesitate to put them in the chat box or um, at any time, reach out to our admissions department uh, to follow up with any uh, questions that you might have, and I'll have um, that information um, at the end of my presentation to you how to get a hold of us. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen with us really quick. All right. So like I said, Alaska Pacific University, we're located here in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. So you'll see um, some of the different activities that our students participate in here, uh, as well as Alaska is huge. So um, this is our state. So uh, one thing that you'll see a lot of our students and folks that are up here in Alaska, we always go like this. So this is our state, this is the state of Alaska. And so they'll ask you where you're at, where you're studying. So we are located right about here. So that's South Central Alaska. So like I said, our state is huge. Alaska itself has more coastline than all lower 48 uh, states combined. So it stretches all the way from San Francisco down to Jacksonville, Florida. Um, so on this map, we are located kind of right around Missouri. Uh, so uh, this is a little snapshot of what it's like studying in Alaska. So one of the questions I get a lot are um, students asking, you know, do you guys have roads? What is it like living in Alaska? Do you have stores? Um, so this is, I kind of joke that this is our version of a traffic jam. So it is normal to see moose uh, walking around, uh, whether it's down on the street or I'm just waiting for one to mosey uh, behind the window uh, behind me. But um, we definitely get moose uh, kind of enjoying our trails and our trees um, here on campus. So you would definitely see those when you're here. Uh, but then this is a snapshot of looking down into uh, the Anchorage, um, the town of Anchorage. So as you notice, we're kind of right nestled up next to the ocean and the mountains. So it's a beautiful city. Um, if you love doing things outdoors, we have a ton of activities and kind of everything that you can think of kind of right at your fingertips. Um, the picture in the top right is one of our favorite past, pastimes, which is fishing. So this is one that we kind of call combat fishing in the summer. You'll see student or folks uh, lined up kind of shoulder to shoulder uh, trying to catch uh, salmon. So um, even if you don't necessarily enjoy the outdoors, uh, you definitely can take wonderful pictures, uh, enjoy the beautiful scenery. Um, so there's a, there's a lot to enjoy. So this is a snapshot um, about APU. So like I said, we're located in Anchorage. Anchorage is the largest city in Alaska. And it's kind of funny because um, I say largest city, um, however, it is still pretty small. Um, uh, theoretically speaking, yeah, we have about 300 a thousand uh, people here in the Anchorage area. Um, probably about 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 max, you can kind of get anywhere um, across the city from one side to the next. So um, it's really easy to get around. 
Um, so our campus is located right in the middle of what we call um, the UMed district. So um, any folks who are maybe interested in healthcare, health related uh, fields, nursing, um, health sciences, pre-med, environmental public health, um, things like programs like that that we offer, um, we work really closely with the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium and the Alaska Native Medical Center. Um, as well as we're right next to Providence, which is again another uh, large medical hospital here in, in Anchorage. Um, kind of being the hub for the state, it's the easiest to fly into. Um, all of the major uh, companies, nonprofit organizations, everything, everything um, kind of has a base here in Anchorage. So that's great for students when we're pairing them up with internships and practicums, um, that it's really easy to do that. And there's lots of variety uh, here uh, in Anchorage. So our campus itself, we're a small campus. Uh, we have about 530 students total, and that's undergraduate all the way up through our, um, we have a doctorate of psychology uh, program. So kind of most of our programs tend to be at the four-year bachelor's degree or higher, but associates, bachelor's, master's, and doctorate, all of those programs are available for uh, students here. We uh, have about 85% of our students are coming from Alaska, um, but we do have 31 states and countries represented here as well. So um, especially for programs like outdoor studies, marine environmental science, that's very, very popular for students coming from outside of Alaska to get to do that kind of hands-on um, project-based learning uh, in a place like Alaska and get to do that as your classroom is, is pretty unique. So um, that's secondly a draw for students coming from um, outside of Alaska. Um, as well as just for any of our programs, definitely students who are up for adventure and exploring, um, maybe interested in um, studying and just the amazing beauty that is Alaska. Uh, so we get kind of a mix of all programs. We do have on-campus housing available for students. So we can talk a little bit more about that in, in a second, but for on-campus housing options, we have, like I said, three different types. Um, primarily, North Atwood is where most of our freshman students live, and that's kind of set up in a suite style dorms. So you have kind of a single double room. Um, each suite has their own living room and bathroom space. Um, so it's really spacious for students, but they're not sharing, uh, you know, with everybody on the floor or something like that. So it's a, a really nice um, option. And then that also includes a meal plan, so kind of your full meals in our cafeteria. Um, here with, with that dorm option. Um, and then, like I said, being a small campus, we have an eight to one uh, student faculty ratio. So that's really great for students where they can kind of focus on that small cohort where they're with their other students. They're not kind of getting lost in a big lecture hall somewhere, um, but they really have that individual attention with uh, their faculty. Um, and so that also helps them kind of pair up for um, research or internship um, opportunities, getting to check out uh, like field classes. Again, it's a lot easier if you're gonna go out to a glacier and work on it, um, that we're taking a smaller group versus hundreds of students out, out to the glacier. So our students really get to make the most of, again, kind of those hands-on learning opportunities. Uh, and then finally, we are an Alaskan uh, Native American Indian Serving Institution. So I talked a little bit about um, kind of what we do for our classes. So again, we are a project-based uh, learning, kind of experiential learning uh, school. So with that, what that means for students is, again, kind of making Alaska your classroom. So that looks a little bit different depending on which program you might be majoring in. So something like marine environmental sciences, maybe you're in taking aquarium technology and you're going down to Seward and you're at the Sea Life Center and you're learning how to be in the aquariums and maintain um, those and work with the mammals. Um, and so you're actually getting a chance to practice that versus just learning about it in the textbook. Um, maybe you're in a program like uh, counseling psychology or business. Maybe some of that hands-on learning looks a little bit different, or maybe you're not out um, necessarily in an aquarium, but you are working with uh, nonprofit organizations here in town. Uh, maybe you're working at the Covenant House and working with homeless youth. Um, 
So depending on kind of what your major is, again, you have those different opportunities to connect, to connect with uh, the community, organizations, businesses, uh, to kind of put into practice what you're learning. Um, so it's very uh, students and community centered, giving uh, students the opportunity to again put that into practice, but then also providing um, services to the community and maybe working on things to help uh, move projects along that they're um, working on initiatives and give back to the community that they're helping. So this is a quick little look at uh, some of our uh, degree programs. So at APU, we divide our programs into uh, three institutes. So we have the Institute of Health and Wellness, the Institute of Culture and Environment, and the Institute of Business and Public Policy. So um, you'll see these are kind of all of our degree programs. So you'll see again, um, bachelor's, master's, doctoral programs, everything listed here. Um, it's one thing that I will mention to you that's really popular for our students is combining um, maybe double majoring or minoring um, in different areas. Uh, for instance, um, outdoor studies, it's really common for our students to pair up with business. Um, say maybe they're looking at um, opening their own guiding business. Uh, we had a student who created their own outdoor clothing line. Um, all of those where they were able to take some of those business classes um, add either a major or a minor to that, and then just helped kind of what their goals were, where they're both doing the love of and had all their outdoor studies classes, but then really understanding what um, kind of the business that they wanted to get into, how to make it um, as profitable as possible, and combining it with uh, taking, you know, maybe one of our other programs like uh, business. So uh, another little look at uh, some of our uh, programs. So one other thing, kind of what does your education look like? What does that mean? Um, so we have a variety of different programs um, offered in different ways for students. Um, some of that has changed definitely a little bit this year due to COVID. I think um, majority of our classes right now are um, online. Um, for just getting ready uh, to announce kind of what we're doing for our uh, spring semester. So that's going to come up here shortly. Um, but right now, we've had a majority of online classes um, with some in-person classes for uh, labs and field-based classes that we're doing. Um, there are classes. We have some programs that are offered completely online. Uh, we have some programs that are primarily on campus classes. And then we have some that are kind of a mix. Um, and then we also have what we call travel courses, and that's like our version of uh, study abroad. So that's really um, different programs go different places. And so uh, you don't have to necessarily um, be a certain major to go on that trip, but just if there's any prerequisites, uh, you would take those. And then um, the different programs, like they do sea kayaking in the Bahamas, they'll do tropical ecology in Peru, did like Viking literature and Iceland and Norway. Um, so again, different programs will kind of rotate over different places each year. Um, we are also have a couple of different um, exchange programs for students. So um, in addition to our travel courses, we are a part of the Eco League. And uh, the Eco League, you might have had a chance to catch one of their presentations um, earlier at the fair. Uh, but that is kind of a, a collaborative, um, uh, five other schools. Um, there's one in um, Arizona, uh, Wisconsin, Florida, Maine, Pennsylvania. So there's a few different locations kind of across the lower 48. Or students can do an exchange, um, kind of pay the same sort of tuition, all their scholarships that kind of follows them, uh, but they have an opportunity to study at a different school that has maybe a little bit different ecological focus than uh, we have at APU. Um, but you can do that up to, for a semester or up to a year. Um, and then the last one, we also have an exchange with the uh, Hawaii Pacific University. So those are a couple different options available for students. All right, so we definitely want you to go to school. 
major in something, get a great job, go out and working into the field uh, that you uh, studied. Um, but there's a lot more to college than just studying. So one of the key things is uh, getting involved on campus, um, especially when you come to a place like Alaska, um, right? So you can't just drive across the state and immediately go home. And we definitely recognize that. So um, I would say um, I'm originally from Iowa. I moved up to Alaska. I've been here for about 15 years now. I absolutely love it. Um, but one thing that's pretty standard is you kind of get an adoptive family. Um, so uh, realizing that not everybody can just fly home all the time. Um, and so you'll have students in your class who might invite you over for holidays with their families, or um, you know, when it's still here in the fall, coming up for the Thanksgiving holiday, um, our dining services will actually, um, students who are staying on campus, they'll invite students to uh, share recipes, maybe uh, family favorites, They'll go out and buy all of the food, invite everybody into the kitchen that can kind of make a big meal together um, and then kind of have a, a, a feast in our uh, dining hall. So again, it's kind of that um, extra support system where um, doing things like that, getting involved in clubs or activities um, really connects you to the community and the students and the faculty and staff that, that are here and um, get, kind of get the most of being um, studying here in Alaska. So these are a couple of things that our um, campus uh, life department um, offers, as well as like our outdoor uh, our outdoor recreation program. Um, like I said, definitely a lot of our students love kind of being outdoors. So we tend to do quite a bit uh, for students outdoors. Um, you don't have to have any prior experience. So you can be brand new and um, just up for an adventure. And we provide all of the equipment. Um, you can rent your, the equipment and take it out on your own or with some of your friends. You can go out on the weekend or um, also you know, kind of free with our outdoor programs on any of the trips that we take students on. So they'll do things like um, ice climbing, skiing and snowboarding, rock climbing, um, hiking, um, one of the favorites, we do an activity in the fall that's uh, called Peak a Week, and students summit a different peak in the Anchorage area one kind of each week, and they do a rotating um, a series. So that's kind of cool. They get to have great views, wonderful pictures, um, and get to uh, tell their family back home some of the adventures that they're having. Um, we also again, do a lot of things if you maybe want to take a break from the outdoors or just, you know, even in addition to that. So we'll have open mic nights, we'll have um, movie nights, um, they'll do game nights. Uh, we have an indigenous art series so they do things like kayak making, um, making mask making, carving classes, different things like that. Um, so a lot of really cool um, things like that. One of the things we're doing for um, right now for COVID, they're doing an online cooking uh, series. So they're sending students either the ingredient list to go grab the ingredients themselves, or we're sending the ingredients out to them. Um, and then they can follow along when we teach them how to cook something on their own. So that's kind of fun. Um, and I think one of the benefits about um, being at a small school, a lot of times that is um, you're able to take advantage of just really doing what you want to do. And there's a lot of flexibility in that. Um, so, for example, we had some students who wanted to try paddle boarding. So, great, we uh, got paddle boards. And um, we have a saltwater pool here on campus. So, uh, they put the paddle boards in the pool. Um, it went over so great, like they decided to try paddleboard yoga. So they offer a paddleboard yoga um, a class and kind of uh, activity for students. And so um, it's really if students have a suggestion, um, we try to make it happen, um, add those things. Uh, same with uh, just our res life department. We had some students who wanted to go to the roller derby. Like, sure, let's you know, take students. Um, so again, it is really flexible, kind of depending on uh, what students want to do that semester, 
they can bring up suggestions. They're always asking for suggestions and then trying to add new activities, um, depending on what students are interested in. So um, affordability, going to college, um, it's a really, really big decision, especially going uh, far away from home. So um, at APU, we are a private, a small private liberal arts and sciences school. So that means we don't do instant out of state tuition. It's all going to be the same, regardless uh, where you're coming from. So for majority of our programs, uh, our our full-time undergraduate program tuition is a little over 20,000 a year. So that's taking between 12 up to 18 credits each semester. There's no price difference if you take 12 all the way up to 18 credits. Um, so if I'll take that 20,000, you don't pay it all at once. Uh, you would split that in half and only pay one semester at a time. I would say majority of our students, uh, I think we have 93% of our students who um, receive some sort of financial aid. So for that, uh, most of our students, that cost is much, much lower. We have a ton of scholarship and financial aid options uh, for students. Uh, kind of automatic scholarships are what we call our merit scholarships, and those are based off of your GPA. Those start at 1500 and go up to $7,000 for the year. Uh, then we also have what we call um, our out-of-state discount, and that's $1,000. So again, those are automatic. We just see where you're coming from. They're coming from out-of-state, maybe what your GPA is. Again, the merit-based uh, scholarships are at a 2.75. Anything above that gets an automatic merit scholarship. And our financial aid folks will put that automatically on your financial aid offer. Uh, then we have what we call donor-funded scholarships, which are, which are APU-specific scholarships. You fill out one application and it puts you in the running for all of the scholarships you're eligible for. So you don't have to do separate applications for each one. Uh, the last one that I'll highlight is called our APU Promise Tuition Grant. So that particular grant is when you fill out the FAFSA, so the free application for federal student aid that opened up October 1st. Uh, so you fill that out uh, typically during your senior year or uh, kind of that uh, year before you're going to attend school. And uh, it, one of the things you can qualify for is something called a Pell Grant. So P-E-L-L -L, Pell Grant. Um, typically students with greater financial need might uh, be eligible for a Pell Grant. With the FAFSA, if you fill one out, if you're eligible for the Pell Grant, you automatically receive our promised tuition grant, which means you get significantly reduced tuition. If you have a full Pell Grant, you could actually have zero tuition. We take care of the rest of the grants and scholarships for you. So again, that's where I said that $20,000 um, tuition amount tends to look very, very different for students once you start adding in uh, the different financial aid and scholarship uh, opportunities that you might uh, receive as part of your financial aid offer. So this is, like I said, um, the free application for federal student aid. That's our school code. You can have um, still up to 10 uh, schools on your FAFSA application. So if you're like kind of that smaller, tight-knit uh, campus, the project-based learning style, uh, definitely add us to your FAFSA application. Um, and so that you can just see exactly what you might be able to get um, in uh, your financial aid offer. And then um, also don't uh, forget to check out all your outside um, community organization scholarships, scholarships through your high school, anything like that for additional funding. So kind of where to start. So uh, definitely start with calling us. You have a team, we can kind of help walk you through step by step. Uh, but our application process is very, very simple. So uh, you just visit our website to apply. We have application fee waivers available for those uh, that might qualify for one. Um, I'll also make a mention, we do have a uh, couple virtual open houses coming up this fall. Um, look for both fall and the spring if you're interested in uh, checking out campus. Uh, right now that is virtual. 
And so uh, we have one coming up this Saturday, October 24th, or we'll also have another one on November 14th. If you uh, attend our open house, uh, we'll also waive your application fee. So sign up, uh, let us know. Um, the sign up sheet is available on our website. You'll see a spot for open house. Um, again, if you attend that, we'll waive your application fee. Um, for our official documents that we need, uh, we don't require letters of recommendation or personal essays or anything like that. So again, it's a very simple application. Probably takes about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we're just looking for your official high school transcript or GED. Uh, if you have any dual credit classes, if you've taken any college uh, classes and gotten credit, we'll need your, also your college transcript. Uh, typically, we're looking for a 2.5 GPA or higher. Uh, anything above a 2.5 will automatically be accepted. If you have lower than a 2.5, uh, we just have a, an extra um, paperwork that we have you complete just so we can continue processing your application. Again, if you have above a 2.75, you'll automatically receive a new marriage scholarship. Um, and then we are test blind, test free, test optional. Um, we don't use the SAT or ACT in the admissions process. And that is not just for COVID. Um, that's a policy we've had for a few years now. So um, again, uh, you're more than welcome to send it, but we, we don't use it in the admissions process. Uh, and then our application. Deadlines you'll see listed here on the side. Um, the priority deadline for fall is May 1st. Um, and kind of the biggest difference, that's a $25 application fee. After May 1st, it goes up to $50. So uh, this is our information. Feel free to uh, follow us on social media, um, see what we're up to, some of, of the things that our students are up to, um, and then definitely go ahead um, and visit our virtual tour online. Uh, so that's again gonna be on our homepage, but feel free to grab any of the admissions information. And then um, since we have a few minutes, don't see any questions, but I might share one more thing with you guys. Just pull it up here really quick. One more time. All right, I still don't see any questions in the chat. So I'm just gonna pull this up really quick. Hopefully you guys are seeing that. Make sure my video sound. Yep, there we go. I picked APU because Alaska is really beautiful and APU has the active learning program, which is really cool. Um, and you're able to get out into the field. And it's a small school, so it creates kind of a community that's really special to me. I chose APU because I wanted to stay in Alaska. I'm from Bethel, um, so I really liked Anchorage because it gave me the choice to be close to home if I really wanted to. 
Um, further, I really like APU's active learning commitment and how engaging the community seemed to be. I chose APU because I, I wanted a new experience, an experience that could help me with my self-growth and my professional growth as well. I learned that APU had a really hands-on based education and that's when I decided to come here. All right. Thanks guys, thanks for joining us and finding out a little bit more about APU. <laughs> all right, well, thank you all again for joining us. Um, and thank you, Amy, for presenting on APU. I think you did a great job. Um, when we close this window, there will be a survey that uh, pops up. There's a very short four question survey and we'd appreciate your feedback if you can provide it. Um, also, again, this is just one of the many sessions that are being hosted. So please be sure to check out the IACAC.org website <clears throat> for additional sessions that you can join. And in about a week, this session uh, will be available online again at the IACAC.org website. So feel free to check that out, plus all the other session recordings. Thank you again for joining us. We hope that you learned a little bit about APU, um, and we hope you have a great night. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>